Good afternoon, I am Precious Mzea Sakaleji. Welcome to Kamna TV Media News. The headlines. Zesco to increase national load shedding to 12 hours due to reduced power generation. More problems for Bill 10 absent TPF MPs as Speaker disowns their console malfunction claims. And PF cutters Innocent Kalimanshi and Nathan Piri fire misses at Stephen Kampiongo. Details coming to you after this commercial. Join Pastor Victoria and Moses Chilua, the Healing Word Ministries International. Starting on the 3rd to 6th December 2020, Dr. Francis Miles from the USA returns to Zambia for a conference on issuing restraining orders. Because you see, God responds to your revelation. So if you approach God as the healer, he heals you. If you approach him as your shepherd, he will touch your soul. But if you approach him judicially, he will show you he's the cause. <laughs> they knew the Healing Word Ministries International in Ibex Hill. Time? 17 hours to 19 hours from Thursday to Saturday. And on Sunday from 09 hours to 11 hours. For more details, call plus 260-962-965-883. You do not want to miss this conference this time. Another media news in detail. Energy Minister Matthew Nkua says Zambia will continue to experience load shedding of at least 8 to 12 hours on a daily basis beginning this Sunday. Mr Nkua, in a ministerial statement in Parliament, explains that this is because power generation will considerably reduce due to the activities of the dam filling for the Kafua Gorge Lower. The minister says activities at the Kafua Gorge Lower will have a direct impact at the Kafua Gorge Upper Power, whose power power generation will be maintained at level to continue to control load management. He says the planned commissioning of the Kafua Loa on the 8th of November 2020 will result in Zesco restriction generation upstream at the power station by closing the division gates at Kafua Gorge Dam, thereby reducing water dispensing from Kafua Gorge Upper. With all this, Mr. Nkua says the nationwide load management will maintain level 3 of the weather-induced power deficit of 2019 which translates into 8 to 12 hours of load shedding daily. Details in the following report. Plant commissioning of Kafue Gorge Roa, Zesco Limited will have, will have to restrict the generation upstream at the Kafue Gorge Upper Power Station by closing and diversion tunnel, and by closing the diversion tunnels and gates at Kafue Gorge Roa Dam thereby reducing water dispensing from Kafue Gorge Upper. Mr. Speaker, as a result of this reduced power generation, the activities of the new dam feeding will result into increased load shedding. First 24 hours, it will be... I'm sorry, Mr. Speaker. As a result of this reduced power generation, the activities of the new dam feeding will result into increased load shedding. First 12 hours a day as power generation will be considerably reduced. During the subsequent six days, reduced generation at Kafue Gorge upper power station will be maintained at a level to control the rate of filling up the new dam. The nationwide uh, load management program will maintain a level three of the weather induced power deficit of 2019. It's called WIPOD 19, which translates into 8 to 12 hours of load shedding. Mr. Speaker, once the dam is successfully filled, the first two generator units, each with 150 megawatt capacity, will then be commissioned. It is expected that the first unit will be commissioned end of November 2020, while the second unit is expected to be commissioned at the end of December 2020. The last three of the five generator units are expected to be commissioned in 2021, bringing the total to 750 megawatts online. Once this historical stage of the dam filling is completed, the preparation of firing up the first 150 megawatt generator will then be expedited towards 
easing of the current 810 megawatts power deficit. Under a fire ruling, Patriotic Front PF Kada Innocent Kalimanshi has refused to work with Home Affairs Minister Stephen Kampiongo. It is not exactly clear what Mr. Kalimanshi, a man who has consistently said without him, President Edgar Lungu wouldn't have become president, meant when he said his allegiance is President Edgar Lungu and not Mr. Kampiongo. Mr. Kalimanshi made these running commentaries at Lusaka Magistrate Court grounds as police led him and others to a police van after a court appearance. Innocent and two others are facing three counts of assault, charges the trial has denied. After spending approximately one week in custody, three ruling patriotic crime PF cutters have finally been granted a cash bill of 10,000 kwacha each with two working sureties from reputable institutions. However, what was exciting as the trio were being led away from the magistrate court grounds where their strong weights against Home Affairs Minister Stephen Campiongo, whom they have told in the presence of police officers that they will not follow him as their support belongs to President Edgar Lungu. Kamni TV had no opportunity to ask the trio why they seemed hard on Mr. Kampiongo and what exactly he would have discussed with them to warrant their statement of never wanting to work with him. Kamli TV is following this matter keenly and is making every effort to converse with the Home Affairs Minister. The trio, namely Innocent Kalimashi, Nathan Piri, and Capson Mwanza are facing three counts of assault, thereby occasioning actual bodily harm. The trio is accused of assaulting Isaac Banda, Muhammad Mutali, and King Zinyambe on the 26th of October 2020 in Lusaka's Chaoma compound. But when the matter came up for plea before Magistrate Tandosa Chabala, the accused pleaded not guilty. The trio was arrested on the 28th of October 2020 in relation with the fracas that happened in Chaoma compound on the 26th of October 2020, in which some unruly patriotic front PF cadres clashed and ended up causing disruption of peace in the area, according to Zambia Police Inspector General Kakoma Kanganja. They further took to the street of Chaoma and blocked some roads, thereby causing panic and fear to the public. Both PFSG Davis Mwila and Lusaka Province Chairman Paul Monga have disowned Mr. Kalimashi, saying he's not their member. The matter has since been adjourned to the 24th of November 2020 for commencement of trial. Miriam Kemba, reporting for Kamri TV News. In other news... Socialist Party leader Fred Membe says Zambians should not allow themselves to be silenced by anyone in discussing the eligibility of Pre President Edgar Lungu ahead of the 2021 general elections. Mr. Membe says it is the right of every Zambian to scrutinize candidates vying for any political office in Zambia. He says he is alarmed that President Lungu and his promoters do not seem to realize that the exercise of power must be a constant practice of self-limitation and more Modesty. Mr. Membe, Mr. Member's comments come in the wake of reprisal from some sectors of society who have advised us saying that President Lungu does not qualify to stand again to stop it. But Mr. Membe, in a media statement, has maintained that the law is very clear and is against President Edgar Lungu. He has since asked Zambians against allowing President Edgar Lungu to seek a third term bid. President Edgar Lungu's eligibility has been a subject of debate for a while now. When we say that President Edgar Lungu is not eligible to contest the 2021 presidential elections, it is not out of hatred or fear of losing to him. Even if Mr. Lungu was a very weak candidate who could be easily defeated, our position doesn't change. The principle and requirements of the rule of law do not change. We may have chameleon-like politicians, but our country's constitution does not change in that psychedelic way. 
We are saying this is simply out of principle, out of respect for the rule of law. And this does not require very complicated legal arguments. It is a very simple and straightforward matter. And put simply, Mr. Rungu has been elected to the office of President of the Republic of Zambia twice. And he has been sworn in as President twice, serving two terms as President. The issue of his first term being less than three years does not arise or apply here. It arises when or applies to a person who assumes the office of president as vice president without being elected, when the president dies, resigns, or is removed from office for any reason. Mr. Rungu did not assume office as vice president and without elections in 2015. He contested presidential elections twice and won. You can call us all sorts of names, threaten us in all sorts of ways, accuse us of all sorts of things, but that will not change this reality. It doesn't matter what legal gymnastics they will try to play, they will not succeed in changing this reality. They can ignore it, but that will not change this reality. Speaker of the National Assembly, Patrick Matibini, has put to rest claims by PF Chifubu constituency member of parliament, Frank Ngambi, and his Mwansabombe constituency counterpart, Kabaso Kapampi, who have blamed non-performance of their parliamentary consuls, leading to them failing to vote for the dead and controversial Bill 10. According to the MPs, their consuls had malfunctioned during the voting process. But this, his ruling in parliament, Dr. Matibini, says the MPs must not blame the system but themselves as there was no malfunction on any system as being claimed. According to the Speaker, the MPs must instead blame themselves for not voting for the Bill 10. He explains that if the MPs' consuls had recorded some malfunction, the MPs could have raised a concern which it with him other than keeping quiet. The ruling Patriotic Front PF through its Secretary General Davis Miller has written to three PF members of Parliament who did not vote for Bill 10 resulting in its death to exculpate themselves within seven days. In his point of order, Dr. F. Nand MP alleged that his vote could not be registered because his consul froze. However, investigations have revealed that if indeed his consul froze, as alleged, he would not even have been able to log into the system, let alone to press the present and yes options, as alleged in his, in his letter of complaint. At any rate, if his consul had indeed frozen, as alleged, he should have immediately alerted me, and I would have in turn instructed the ICT officers in the chamber to assist him forthwith. I've come to the conclusion that on the material day, Dr. F. Nandi MP logged into the system as required. He, however, did not select the present key, which would have been activated to enable him to vote. For, contrary to his assertion that his vote was not recorded due to a system failure, Dr. F. Nandi's failure to register his vote was as a result of his own failure to press on present. Well, that news item brings us to the end of Cabinet TV Media News, but before we go, recap of the headlines. Zesco to increase national load shedding to 12 hours due to reduced power generation. More problems for Bill 10 absentee PF MPs as Speaker disowns their consul malfunction claims. And PF cadres Innocent Kalimanshi and Nathan Piri fire missiles at Stephen Kampiongo. Thank you so much for joining me.
Connect with us on social media, Kamne TV on Facebook, Kamne TV Africa on Instagram. I am Precious Mzea Sakaleji. Good afternoon.